these next couple of weather center iterations are going to be critical for our neighbors and especially our friends down there in the Caribbean from the island of Hispaniola, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, I'm watching your area very closely, Cuba, the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, all of the Bahamas for that matter, still can't entirely take our foot off the gas pedal here in southernmost Florida. Just to be on the safe side, I'm watching these left and right bobs and weaves that we're getting out of our computer model ensembles, and then naturally Honduras and Nicaragua, we all have to watch this system together because Melissa does look like it's going to attempt to blow its top. Welcome back to the Weather Center, everybody. If you've noticed by clicking on this video, I'm not holding back today. We've got a pretty rough setup ahead for us down there in the Caribbean Sea, and a lot of people, thousands of people, if not more than that, could be directly impacted by a powerful system, potentially one of the strongest we've seen this hurricane season. Now, I know we had Aaron Umberto that really quickly achieved Category 5 intensity, but those systems were way out there. Those systems were far away from anybody. We had some close calls in Bermuda, and I'm not discounting you all out there. I watch your back as well. But in this case, we've got some torrential and possible tragic scenarios that can unfold down here. So with that being said, please, I'm going to say nudge the like button first. We got to get this information out there. There's still a lot of discontinuities in our computer models, and I want to go over the threats. I want to go over the possibilities with you together today and as we go forward in time between now and whenever this system decides to get its act together. So please nudge that like button. Let's get this info out across the interwebs. If you're brand new to the channel just discovering this page, please consider kindly hitting that subscribe button. Share this information with folks you believe would benefit it from across the spectrum. And last but certainly not least, drop me a comment in the comment section down below, especially if you're watching from an area that could be possibly hit by this thing. I really want to get in touch with you. I want to let you know that I got your back. I'm going to watch your six, and I have been feverishly watching this like a hawk since we got the yellow blip, since we got the tropical storm upgrade, and I'm going to be with you every step of the way from start to finish, even if this be the climax of the hurricane season, which stick around to the end because it just might not be. But anyway, here is the latest. This is the 5 o'clock advisory from National Hurricane Center. Wind still steady at 50 miles an hour, and the forecast speed, or the current speed, has really grinded to a slow 2 miles an hour, folks. We may as well look at this thing as stationary. It's really not moving. To tell you the truth, 2 miles an hour, that's slower than I typically walk on average. For my Halloween fans out there, Michael Myers himself probably walks faster than 2 miles an hour, to put that into perspective. So this thing is quite literally moving at a snail's pace. We've got some good news. The GFS had plastered Haiti, the Dominican Republic, with anywhere between 1 to 3 feet of rainfall. If the current trends in the forecast track hold, you can see the latest cone forecast here from the National Hurricane Center, does show us achieving that rapid intensification phase. The system itself is still struggling a little bit with some vertical wind shear down there. The conditions have not fully improved, but the more this system trends towards the west and eventually the southwest, we're going to wander into a pocket of very, very warm water at the surface deep sea, or I should say subsurface energy, and then most of all, really good focused vertical velocities right where I have my circle drawn. The HAFS models, ever since ingesting the reconnaissance data that they've been compiling over the last 24 hours, have really trended this thing off towards the west. So Lord willing, despite some of the impacts we can still feel in the island of Jamaica and southwesternmost Haiti, all thanks to the direction the system will be moving and the low-level easterly trade wind flow. Regardless, the further south we can keep this thing, the better, albeit we're still going to see some very intense and prolonged impacts. When you look at the true color visible satellite before we lose the sun, we're starting to get our act together, sort of. We have got some very deep and powerful thunderstorms firing on the eastern half of this system. Incredibly intense. These hot towers are very high in altitude. When you switch over to your infrared satellite, look at the shades of color that we're seeing here. The more vibrant the shades, those pinks, those purples, the whites, all that tells me is this system is reaching for the trope 
tropopause, as high as it could possibly go in our weather-producing atmosphere. It is very high up there, and this thing is really cranking. That is very heavy rainfall. And as we continue to track this thing towards the north, even though we may dodge the full extent of these rain bands and these immense pockets of very steady, heavy rainfall, regardless, we're still going to see very extensive amounts piling up for Jamaica and much of Hispaniola. Landslides, mudslides, Obviously, we've heard the same song and dance before in the past when these systems traverse the Caribbean islands. There's going to be a lot of water piling up in a very short period of time. Still a little lopsided, though. If you notice, it looks like a low-level spin right there trying to peek out from underneath those deep cumulonimbus towers and all that upper-level cirrus. Might still be asymmetrical, lopsided towards the east, kind of stacking back in this direction if you think about it vertically. But as the wind shear begins to weaken over the next few days and it continues to move generally in this direction, it's going to get out of that upper-level westerly shear and it'll be really able to optimize its environment. Look closely at the clouds here. See how the cirrus blow off from the CBs, the cumulonimbus, those very tall thunderstorms racing off to the east. But then down here, notice that the popcorn cumulus, the clouds here, they kind of just peter off and fizzle off towards the north until eventually they hit that corridor of strong winds. So it goes to show where your most optimized environment is currently with this system. Now, on top of the heavy rain risk, because I will admit naturally the water with these tropical features is usually the number one cause for catastrophe regardless of if it be injury forgive me for being so blunt but you're always going to get the transparency from me even if it come to loss of life or if we're talking loss of property usually it's the water that will get you but we can't take away from the fact that even though we are a bit of a lopsided system right now we are expecting maybe even beyond rapid intensification explosive development with this system as it moves slowly towards the west We've got great sea surface temperatures, hottest waters of the basin. A lot of the subsurface energy has been untapped since the last hurricane season. So even with the slow movement expected from this system, we're not quite going to see the waters upwelled and cooled off to the extent to where it'll actually be a detriment to the intensity. It's probably just going to keep cranking. And some of us have even talked behind the scenes. Could this go toe to toe with our heavyweight contender, Wilma? from almost precisely, almost, actually almost precisely, today is October 22nd, Wilma made landfall on October 24th in southern Florida. Could we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with our reigning heavyweight champion, Major Hurricane Wilma of 2005? When you look at the latest HAFS models, not only are they outliers now, but they are really showing that intensification phase going on. Forgive me, Tropical Tidbits is running slow. Could just be the computer as well, so I'll step you through it slowly but surely. But you can see by this Friday, definitely starting to get closer to hurricane intensity. We start to meander and make that turn towards the left, hopefully staying away from Jamaica. If we were to keep it this far to the south, genuinely speaking, we might be able to avoid a lot of the more intense hurricane conditions. This will be a fairly compact system. Don't look at these colors here and the wind flow here making it feel like you're going to be seeing the hurricane conditions reaching that far to the north. Remember, this is your mid-level flow. If I take us in for a very close look and show you the halves A right up on top of the system here and we go down to the low levels, See how the wind field really shrinks down? There's Jamaica on the top portion of the chart there. Little to no wind. So the more we can trend this thing further to the south, yes, we're going to set this off like Mount St. Helens up in the pack northwest, but at least we can keep the bulk of our hurricane, let alone sustained major hurricane impacts, away from the populated areas. We're kind of threading the needle or almost playing explosive ordnance disposal trying to defuse the bomb, trying to keep it further to the south, as it continues on that west-southwesterly trajectory, easily achieves Category 5 intensity. When you look at the HAFS B model as well, you see the same thing. I'm just going to take you all the way out to the end. The HAFS B model takes this thing all the way down to 884-ish, 886 millibars. 
that is right up against the reigning champ, Hurricane Wilma, which I believe had a minimum central pressure of 883 millibars during its peak intensity. And once again, notice where we are here. We're not anywhere near where the GFS has been predicting. It's still trying to die on that hill. The Icon model takes it up like this. The Euro takes it back and then through Jamaica like so. We are furthest to the left. In fact, more in alignment with what the Canadian model has been showing us for the last several consecutive model runs. The Canadian model is trying to flirt with South Florida. I'm going to shoot straight with you all. If you're already in my comments talking about hype, I did say this could be a very powerful system, and we're starting to see that unfold. So rock with me. Throw me a little trust. Give me a little faith if you're still watching. Believe it or not, this lines up really well with our Canadian model. And the one question that I still have on the table is when does it make that turn? Is it a sharp ricochet off of a barrier? Or is it a more gradual arcing back up like this? Because that could change the forecast incredibly for not only the Cayman Islands, but Central America, Jamaica, Cuba, us here in Florida, the Bahamas, everybody. So we have a long time to stick with this system. And in fact, looking at the trends here, for example, if I show you the artificial intelligence Euro ensembles here, take a look at the track density for 12Z. Notice that the Cayman Islands, the entirety of the Bahamas, the entirety of Cuba, Central America, and the southern tip of Florida are back in the blue. If I go back to Six Zulu earlier today, we don't have Six Z, unfortunately, but if I show you the earlier model runs, Hold the phone. I just dorked up the overlay. I didn't know that they go bottom to top, top to bottom. But then you take a look at six hours ago, not all, not all of Cuba, not all of the Bahamas, and none of the state of Florida were in that potential swath of ensemble members. The same thing with the FNV3 Google Ensemble. You look at Sig Zulu, going to continue to watch for the Northeast, but you take a look down at the Southeast. Less of us are under that potential margin of error. Same thing with the GenCast, the other Google DeepMind ensembles. You look at that, very narrow window. You can see we're finally getting a consensus there. Then you go to 12 Zulu, and all of a sudden that kind of just changes up almost completely. Let me go ahead and zoom it back out. This is my first time manipulating this page. There you go. Look at 12Z. You got the whole state of Florida there bathed in blue all of a sudden, which is very interesting to say the least. Again, very small window of opportunity. Let's not stress out here in Florida. I've heard other sources out there mentioning that we got to start looking at maybe making plans. I wouldn't go that far just yet, but will I say that the window to still see some Florida impacts from this system is open? Oh, yeah. I would definitely say we've got it cracked open for a nice little cool breeze on a fall evening out there on Halloween night, we'll say. Definitely still got that window cracked open. We have not shut it all together. This is what we're waiting on, and I know I'm taking up a lot of your time, but this is what we're watching here. we got an upper low swinging through Southern California, portions of Nevada and the desert southwest, my old stomping grounds. Family back there in Tucson's probably seen some thunderstorms with this today. The OWS is probably working overtime with this setup. And then we're looking at this real sharp amplitude ridge that is pinched off between another upper level low and multiple embedded vortices that are spinning around. The little spins there stuck up in that enormous cold pocket between James Hudson Bay swinging back down through Quebec and Ontario and then into the upper Great Lakes the Midwest so as you can see we're going to be watching how this undercuts our ridge and exactly where this thing sets up and exactly how sharp of an amplitude it's going to take on if you look at what the Euro ensembles have for this upcoming Monday at zero Zulu night and day difference between what the GFS has the GFS is biasing the east side of that ridge axis toppling it over allowing for a more quicker northeasterly escape, whereas the euro continues to try to trend with a bit of a weaker setup underneath that ridge. And then my biggest question here is how well are the models handling a setup like this with it slipping underneath such a blocking style ridge? Because if I zoom out and you take a look at the northern hemisphere, that most definitely right in through here is an omega block. That is a blocking pattern that will just essentially act like a crash out there on I-4 and slow everything down. And usually models, when it comes to those cutoff features, want to move them along too fast. 
So that's why I definitely want us all to continue to pay attention, even the United States, with the progression of the system. We're going to have another seven days of it just hanging out down there, marinating in the Caribbean, let alone beyond the seven-day window for it to try to do some wonkiness and keep us in that potential impact area, let alone the projected path altogether. And again, I want to echo, this is a rough video to make. There's a lot of bad news. I wish I had some good news, but I'm just shooting straight with you. I promise that's all there is to it. And I just have these questions I've been floating around, and that's why I've been obsessing over this stuff for the last several days and will continue to do so probably through the rest of the month. Now, get this. The euro, believe it or not, is actually showing hashtag next wave down there. Look at that. Very small signal, but I remember last year. This is giving me flashbacks to Helene pre-Milton. I remember I got some flack from some new viewers out there or some passerbyers on the YouTubes. They got a little upset at me for mentioning, we've got a major hurricane coming and you're talking about the next system? Well, I'm going to because we don't need to see things down there in rapid succession just as the state of Florida and the southeast United States, the Carolinas, saw in rapid succession with multiple hurricanes last year. Am I saying that's what's going to happen? No, but I'm just putting the plug out there, spending 30 to 60 seconds on it to let you know that we are seeing not only the euro ensembles but the gfs and even the canadian ensembles are picking up on another potential feature that might try to pop off a little bit do a little something down there when you look at your velocity anomalies for the next 15 days as we get into the first seven to ten days of november we are back under favorable phasing once again so it's not impossible and that is where I'm going to leave you for the day today so I prevent myself from burning out and I don't want to overload you with all the information. Plus, I know everybody else is probably buzzing like crazy on social media trying to pass on all the info. And again, I do apologize for the sinister tone of this video. I don't like to produce videos like this, but I have promised you from day one I'm going to shoot straight with you all and that's precisely what I'm doing. So stay safe. Hold on to your butts down there. We are on DEFCON 4 of the Hold on to your butts o meter, and you can guarantee that the weather center is going to keep you ahead of the storm, ahead of the curve. As soon as I know, you will know all the latest information. So thank you all very much for watching. I didn't get to say it in the beginning, but happy Wednesday hump day. I hope all is well in your neck of the woods, and I'm watching everybody down there in the Caribbean and the rest of us that may be in the path of least resistance for Tropical Storm Melissa, future Hurricane Melissa. But until next time, folks, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.